Suicide Squad, get Joker issue one, Brian Azzarello, uh, with art by Alex Maleev. This is one of these things where I'm, I, I looked at the list of books and went, okay, that's that's kind of the maybe because it's the Black Label book, it's kind of extra. But I'd forgotten Maleev did the art, and I, I looked mm-hmm. at it and went, oh, it's Maleev. Oh, oh dear. I, I guess I'm reading this. <laughs> I have never gone through... You know, as I'm reading an issue, every so often I'll, I'll catch myself, like, I'll I'll ruin the flow of what I'm reading. It doesn't matter how good it is. It'll, it'll happen every so often. I'll catch myself being aware that I'm reading. I'll be like, oh, this is, you know, this is good, or, you know, this is not so good, you know, whatever. And I'll almost be kind of forming a sort of score in my head already, just at those points as I'm reading the issues. Like, oh, if it continues on this, this will be an eight or so on. I have never gone up and down so much doing that in a single issue as this book. Like, at, at, at points, I was like, oh, this, this might be a nine. Other points was like, this is going to be a goddamn three. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, can I make... So obviously the art's not going to be a sore point. The art is gorgeous throughout. Yeah. Uh, that, that pretty much goes without saying. Uh, Jason Todd, as a sort of reluctant like leader of the Suicide Squad, because they're sending him after Joker, also I actually think it's kind of an interesting story choice and kind of works for the character. I think this might be something coming from DC editorial, given we've got the uh, yeah maybe the new you know the Suicide Squad zombie whatever it's yeah. called, but yeah. So okay with that, can I can I make a prediction and say that uh, one of the elements that you thought was maybe a little, shall I say, forced in the book was directly referencing real world events from about a year ago or well not be. a year. January esque. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that time. is not a year ago, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, uh, a lot's happened this year. It feels like a year ago. A long year. <laughs> but yeah, like it starts talking about the insurrection in January and how uh, Whale Dog was there and was in full support of it. I am. Um, <laughs> like, I knew. You know, I, I'd seen these the the well the first couple of panels of this stuff before, uh, like like a few weeks ago, because. Obviously, like, you know, preview copies, whatever, went out for review, mm-hmm. and these things leaked. And uh, the creators of, of Wild Dog were extremely unhappy that their character has been used like this without any, you know, asking of their, you know, blessing and nothing. They were like, no, that completely betrays the point of our character. I'm not surprised because even I'd sort of did a double take, especially since like I, I've not really read that much whale. I've I've seen him pop up here or there in comics. My main exposure to Whale Dog, I imagine, like most people, is probably Whale Dog on the Arrow TV show, which is not a good show. Just uh, get that out of there. But it was just so funny because I'm so so used to him being Latino. Yes, no, I, I get where you come from. Uh, that, yeah. I was like, so he started saying all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, I guess Whale Dog's white in the comics. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that's the sort of thing as well. it's like you know I guess. people of our rough age come and start reading like Green Lantern and it's Hal Jordan and they're like who's this white dude <laughs> because they grew up with you know John Stewart on the cartoon for example mm-hmm. uh, it's a similar thing although obviously this is not a legacy character in the same way that is this is I, I believe just meant to be the same person just you know they didn't account for it in the comics yeah yeah um, it is super weird it is super super weird um, I just, I just think it's, it's the same thing with uh, John Jones. A lot of the others, you know, he's white before not that long ago in the comics, I think. Yeah, I mean, John Jones could be anything, so it's just it, it could be, but between obviously Supergirl and that stuff, and even going back to his, his appearances on Smallville, uh, you know, every you know, pretty consistently as, as a black man, is like that's just you know who he is now, right. Yeah, we're just kind of used to it at this point, and I mean that, that's that's fine, that's whatever. It was just kind of this this weird moment where I'm like, oh, I, get, I never realized Whale Dog was white. I just assumed that the character in the show was cast to match the comics, but obviously not. Um, so that was like a weird thing. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I guess I guess we're, we're painting Whale Dog as this type of person. Um, I, and I have no problem with comics like sort of alluding to or thematically bringing up like conflicts in the real world i have no problem with that i don't think i like them actually using an event and speaking about it like it just happened like earlier this year like in context of the continuity it just it feels really weird to me i think this technically gets away with it because it's not a continuity book right so this could be set 
Oh sure. See you I, well, I, I, I don't mean like it's, it's in mainline continuity. I'm, I'm not because like, no, I know it's no. not. I, I just mean in any context. I don't think I like a comic book unless <laughs> unless it's like super satirical and everything in it is like real world. But this is still the Suicide Squad. This is still Jason Todd who grew up with Batman. But we still had that insurrection uh, in Washington D.C. in January. I don't know. It just it all feels a bit weird. Like you're mixing very specific things with the like I, I don't even i don't like it when the usual presidents I, I would rather just have a fake president i just it feels better to me it's a comic book yeah. you know uh have president you know william sadler or, or whatever <laughs> you know i, I it's just it, it, it did take me out of it because all this because immediately i started thinking about the real debate and the real issues rather than thinking about the comic book it took yeah, me no, out I, of the comic I, i'm saying and then i'm like why is wild dog like this you know like Mm. It's, it's that 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 whole prolonged section is definitively not good. Yeah, no, because uh, I, I like the stuff before that. I like I like Amanda recruiting Jason and Jason sort of like struggling with the decision to like you know take the job or not. Um, I think mm. that stuff's fine. That stuff's all entertaining and solid. Um, I like uh meeting the team kind of yeah, like going through them all. Not yeah. entirely sure where this version of Silver Banshee is meant to be from, based on the accent in the, Actually, the, the I dialogue. Was, I was thinking that as well. They're clearly writing an accent for... It was like... It was almost like Cockney. <laughs> yeah. like almost, it, was, it was almost like imagining like, like a Vinnie Jones voice. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, obviously, they build up to Harley as kind of the, the big superstar, who's obviously the safe one. Although, it's a Black Label book, so maybe she's not safe. <laughs> I mean, she could... They could just easily kill her in this. Yeah, if they want to. No no problem, right? I mean, after all, Firefly beats it at the end of this issue, so, I mean... Yeah, it's only Firefly, though, isn't it? Probably get away with that mainline continent if they really <laughs> wanted. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let's be honest, there's like six more of them. So they do do, they do implant the bomb in uh, Jason's neck, although they do point out that it's not a bomb tra- in the traditional Suicide Squad sense. It's more of a, ah, it'll just kind of like boil your blood from the inside and you'll erode. <laughs> I actually bust. quite like this, the idea that it completely just destroys any trace of what they are, who they were. There's no, like, DNA records left for mm. them to be identified by. It makes, that, sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense that they wouldn't want it, it to be tracked, yeah. Yeah, but that entire helicopter ride with uh, that conversation, uh, it, it just, I don't know, it felt really awkward, like, oh, we're going to put, like, topical issues into the book, but it's just so blatant, and it's not... <sighs> I don't know, it, it feels like we're going to have a character who represents those type of people. But we're not actually, I mean, maybe by the end of the story, well, maybe, maybe like there's going to be an arc here, maybe Whale Dog is being set up to have a really gruesome death <laughs> that most people will enjoy. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah, but know. then that, that, that kind of sucks for Wild Dog fans, doesn't it? It does, no, it does. I mean, Whale, Whale Dog's been thrown under the bus here. There's, there's no denying that. And I don't really care about Whale Dog that much, so I'm not... I, I feel bad for his creators, though. You know, like yeah. those, those people who you know, worked hard to create character with some legacy, you know. Pe- pe- people know who Waldo, if nothing else, because like I say, you know, it was a character on Arrow for, what, probably four years, five years? It's done it for a while. To then have this be what people will associate with Wild Dog going forward, that, that's got a sting. That's weird. This is, it feels like Azarello's been a bit edgy without... Yes, Azarello would never be edgy now, would he? <laughs> But without any like sort of like finely tuned craft to it, it's just there's just the 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 comic just pauses for like four or five pages to have this conversation, rather than it feeling like naturally part of the story or the yeah. the, the ongoing events. And then it was followed by another moment I really hate, where they decide to quote the Suicide Squad movie and not the new one, not not the one that's just come out, the the shit one from a few years ago. Hmm. Where they do the. We're bad guys, remember? And even th- th- I think I think if I'm remembering right, that was Harley's line in that movie because it was in a lot of the trailers. So so she like smashes open the window and just steals like a purse or a baseball bat or something. And uh, you know, and, and she's like, "Yeah, we're bad guys." But and and the way it's drawn here, the guy's like, "Oh, we're bad guys, remember?" And, you know, hands up, saying it to Harley, and it's like like mocking, and I'm like. Why are you mocking that movie here? Like, it, it, I don't know, it just felt weird. If I remembered the line from the movie, maybe I'd have noticed that, but <laughs> I didn't. I, 
I'm pretty sure I only remember it because it was in the trailer. And it was the ending no, I, I, of, I, of a lot of the trailers. I remember the moment in the trailer, but I never, it never even occurred to me when I was reading this that there was dialogue from that movie. Yeah, and I was like, why? Why is that here? Why are you doing that? Because I think a lot of the rest of it, you know, like they meet up with Toy Man, who's going to like deck them out with equipment. He's I got like his lo- robot car dog. Yeah, he's got a robot car dog. He's got like uh, other like robot pets that he's got around that are like surveillance drones or whatever. He takes them in his ice cream truck to a place where they think they've seen the Joker go in. Harley goes in, try to settle a score. But of course, it's a decoy. It's some poor guy who's had his face sewn up and has a Joker like outfit and mask on. Uh, and then chaos ensues. Big fight scene. Uh, the Suicide Squad run out. We do get a glimpse of uh, Mimi's powers <laughs> with the like the parasite style face. Meow meow, uh, right? Meow meow. Yeah, Harley calls a Mimi. Harley yeah. calls a Mimi. Yeah, which yeah. I think I think that's easier to say than meow meow. So Mimi, I mean, probably. But I, I thought that looked really good and kind of cool. Um, oh, it does. I love the mood. It, like it, I, I love the feeling of them being in Gotham. Even just them sitting in the back of this van, all, all the dark shadows. It just—it's got a good moody vibe to it. But that's Malieve. That's just Malieve doing it. Malieve it is. Does. There's a point where um, when they all burst into the bar and all all draw the guns. There's a fantastic panel of all the guns being drawn on everyone. You know, until the and and it's all just in these clicks sound effects that that makes up the panel. I just th- I just thought that looked fantastic. Just as a moment. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Jason calls Amanda Waller, and b- basically, Toy Man's got a lot more intel than they do about what this is about, about how the Russians might be, and this is, you know, and I didn't mind this as much, it bothered me a little because of the previous political talk, because it felt like it was attached to that. On its own, I would be okay with the idea that the Russians are paying off Joker to create chaos, <laughs> and, and, you know, the idea of that being an allusion to... Russians, like, you know, messing with elections or... or that, pay- that is enough of, okay, no, you can reference real world, yeah. you know, events, implications, and, you know, uh, parody it, almost. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. A, that's a comic book parody, essentially, of something that has been talked about and, and you know... As opposed it, to four pages on, oh, man, that thing that happened earlier this year. Yes. Yes, whale dog took a shit on the desk. <laughs> that, 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 that is literally a thing in this book. Um, and the funny thing is, is that the premise is so Amanda Waller seemingly gets killed here at the end because uh, Joker shows up with some goons who are dressed like the four friends from A Clockwork Orange, and he quotes A Clockwork Orange, uh, spouting yeah. ultra violence and whatnot. I'm not sure how I feel about this Joker. The way you know when he bursts in. I just like I don't know this this design, not the alpha as well, but just like the the face that you know the hat. I, I don't know, not feeling it. Well, the hat's part of the outfit. It, it is, but like I'm not feeling it in general. For, for um, the, you know, for Joker I mean, well, I'll I'll see what it looks like when he's actually got the. Uh, the I, but I actually thought the Clockwork Orange reference he seemed to work for the Joker. He beats Amanda Ward to death with a with a crowbar, I think, or something similar at least. Uh, just like I think it's he... the the cane that he's, yeah. he's got as part of the outfit, isn't it? Just like he killed Jason, of course. Um, but the, the 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 you know the big reveal here, the big cliffhanger, is that Joker has the the phone or the device that can set off all of their bombs, and to make a point, just immediately kills Firefly, who we see sort of burst into flames, and then is just like a pile of bones on the ground, and they're like shit, we're screwed, because the Joker can just kill any of them anytime he feels like it it's a good job he had like a, a flame resistant outfit to like leave it there to, to be an identifiable body isn't it it makes sense firefly would have a free <laughs> it, 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 it does i would say <laughs> so i feel like waller overlooked something there um yeah it could have been someone cosplaying this firefly <laughs> Sure. That's possible. Because I actually really like the cliffhanger. I think this is actually a really fun idea for a story is that all of a sudden Joker has control of the Suicide Squad and they're going to have to try and what's, find a way to get, get him like, to lose that What's he going to try and make them do? And yeah. obviously they're going to try and get to him before he you know, kills them all. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they even mentioned Pebbles, who's, I asked the character who said the line from the movie that you uh, were complaining about. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we, we have a fairly interesting roster of members 
most of whom feel like they can be killed, especially since we're at continuity. I mean, Amanda Waller just died, so I mean, they're all fair game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever at this point, right? Yeah. If anything, it would surprise me if, you know, Joker and Jason die at the same time as they kill each other at the end, and that's the end of the story is everyone's I, dead. I, I do feel like the story is coming down to everyone's going to be dead, and it's just going to be Jason versus Joker. Hmm. Harley will be last to go, though, if that's the case. Harley will be, like, there till almost the end. Probably. But... Especially because she's the only other one with personal beef. This, this was a very easy read. It looked gorgeous. I like the plot. I like most of what it's doing with the plot. It's just that shoehorned in political section where it just I outright starts talking about a real event just was so distracting. And I'm not... And let's make this very clear. We We are in full support of comic books talking about issues and and using comic book medium to explore topics and ideas and have something to say if they feel they want to get like a, a moral across or something they feel passionate about. I am all for it every single time, right? We're a very liberal podcast, but this was just this stop and actually reference the real thing for five pages. It was weird. It serves no purpose except to make you dislike Wild Dog, which you just like, I mean, he's on the Suicide Squad, it's fine. You don't need to like him. Yeah, but this is like a real world. Like, I would much rather he like punch a child in the face in the story to make us hate him, and then have like have enjoy him watching him explode later, <laughs> than yeah. do, do, doing a very real thing, which is a really real thing. You know, a thing that we all have a very strong opinion about one way or the other. So making me want to watch him blow up is like kind of uncomfortable because it's a bit more like akin to like. Does that mean I want everyone who feels that uh, way to that blow up? That's what I mean. Like the idea here is okay. We're supposed to hate him, and it's supposed to be really satisfying when when he inevitably snuffs it. Now, are, are we? Is that supposed to be like a stand in to our feelings for people who were actually, you know, the inspiration? Are we supposed to go? Oh yeah, they should all burn up like Firefly here, and we're gonna and take satisfaction from that. That feels a weird leap. Yeah, especially since obviously we we both uh, very much you know disagree with those actions and want everyone involved to get their comeuppance, but that comeuppance is not being burned alive from the inside, because we're not savages. Yeah, you didn't even burn witches alive from the inside. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird disconnect. But I think that's why it's murky, because it, it, it's it's trying to put these, these traits onto a character in a comic book story where it's trying to manipulate how we feel about that character, but because we have very strong feelings to people in the real world who feel this way, and we have very strong feelings about how they should be treated, about how their actions shouldn't be tolerated, the idea then to link that to how he may end up going in this comic is a really weird disconnect that's uncomfortable, because you're mixing... Because when I'm watching a horror... When I'm watching Afraid of the 13th and I'm rooting for teenagers to get slashed and diced and, like, put yeah, through... Everyone wants teenage to get slashed and diced. Right? That's not me actually wanting real people to be sliced and diced. But when you connect that to, like, a real group of people who I have actual legit problems with, it makes it really murky because you're you're kind of mixing my fantasy, you know, comic book story, movie story, like, oh, characters, it's okay to kill characters and that because they're characters, it's fine. Have some fun with the with the chaos and the carnage. Yeah, I, I like we we obviously want those people to be punished. There, there are punishments that don't involve brutal deaths that that we would be quite satisfied with. I think, personally speaking, I, you know, you know, I'd be so bold as to speak for both of us here on that one. Yeah. So to sum up, it's very hard to get behind wanting to root for a character's demise when the traits you're giving him are something that many of us are feeling in the real world that like we want to actually address that real problem. And the solution to the real problem is not going to be to just wish violent, bloody death on them. So, yes, that, that's why that is so weird and complicated and problematic and not problematic in an offensive way, just problematic and it's hard to like let it go with the story because of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's really weird. Which is a shame, because I think the rest of it's actually mostly pretty good. And enjoyable, the art's gorgeous. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit more mixed on than you in general anyway, in that, you know, as I was going up and down, I think the, the first section, probably up until that helicopter ride, is kind of fantastic. I think it loses its... Obviously, the helicopter ride is, you know, the worst part, by a long shot. Um, I do think it loses its kind of 
focus a little bit. Like, I like that the the, uh, the bar scene's good, but the toy man stuff is it's fine. But then uh, you know, the stuff after as well with with Waller and, and I, this Joker. You know, I'm not necessarily feeling Joker doing clockwork orange. It feels a bit unjokery to me for him to take on a part like that. Yeah, I feel like he takes on parts all the, all the time when he feels the need to. Um... The original parts that he tends to take on, he doesn't. I don't know the idea of him just kind of dressing up as a movie character. Essentially, I, I mean, I, I I can see how you how you might think this is like uh, uninspired. It's like you know him taking a yeah. character that maybe is closely too related to the main set of the Joker in the first place. So uh, it's a bit maybe lazy and like a, a cheap pop, as it were. But um, yeah, it seemed to fit to me. But I mean. Like I say, I already had like something else to really complain about, so I wasn't, I wasn't yeah, really looking yeah, for like, something else. Don't be wrong. In in comparison to that sequence, uh, you know, minor quibbles. Yeah, but... I, I I I I plan on reading the issue two of this. I think I want to see where this goes, especially since it seems to be coming out in the quieter week of the month. So, uh, I uh, is this monthly or bi-monthly? Do we know? Maybe may bi-monthly. That sounds because it's like double size. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these. Prestige books are uh, and that, unless that, that said, I'll leave though, my head on it. Malie's doing work on Checkmate right now, so I I suspect that this was already done in advance. That or, is very possible. Or, I'm just going to try and or Checkmate was already done in advance. One of them must have been done in advance. There's no way he's pumping out monthly comics in a double size thing at the same time. Yeah. So I see. Next issue is in September seventh. So yeah. Somehow monthly. it's monthly. So uh. What are you rating? Does this what get Joker issue one? I'm gonna give it a five point five. That section really Ooh. soured me on it. Oh, I, I, I'm going to be a bit more, I think, diplomatic. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with a seven, uh, and it does. Lo it's losing at least a full point for that that helicopter raid sequence. But I, I generally enjoyed the rest of it, and the art's really nice. And I like the ending. I like the setup. It you know it's amazing how many good. Jason Todd characterizations we've been getting recently. Um, so, fair play. Fair play. Uh, 7 out of 10 for me.